Hi, my name is Sammy Skinner. I'm a Red Can Artist and Sambia Ambassador. And today I wanna to show you two different ways to cut a face spray. The first way that we're gonna do it is sort of like Farrah Fawcett. Think wispy and blown back. The second way is gonna be a little bit more like Jennifer Aniston, sort of cupping into the face. We're gonna use a wet shear for the first part and we're gonna use a dry shear to texturize. So let's get started. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out where our face frame lives on our head shape. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take our comb, we're gonna place it on the top of the head. So if you have a client in your chair, you always wanna check this because everybody's head slopes differently and everybody's hair is gonna fall differently. So if we cut beyond this, sometimes we can create a little bit of a mullet and we don't wanna do that. So let's find where the hair naturally wants to fall forward. So I can see that the comb is coming off the head right here. So that's gonna be my starting point for the face frame. Right where the comb comes off the head, I'm gonna take a diagonal back line towards the ear because our hairline travels back. So we wanna follow that density when we're cutting the front face frame. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now our face frame is sectioned out and now we're gonna cut both sides differently. So first, we're gonna cut our wispy side first. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split my face frame into two sections. And I'm only doing this to make sure that we can keep control where the head changes direction. So right here where this recession starts, we have a major change of direction on the head. So we wanna make sure that we're cutting both of those sections at two different times. I'm gonna use the tip of the nose as my reference point for how short I want these layers to go. And we're gonna do the same exact lengths on both sides. We're just gonna cut them a little bit different. So on the wispy side, the fair faucet side, I'm gonna use a slide cutting technique behind my hand to sort of mimic a razor. So I'm gonna over direct this section forward. I'm gonna pull past where my guide would be. So the guide being my nose. Now a couple things to note. If you want this length to cascade longer as you work your way down with the shear, move and slide your hands down as you're cutting. Now, if you want to remove more length, try and keep your hand as stationary as possible. We are going to slide down as we remove length. So here's my nose. The tip of my nose is my guide. So I'm gonna open my shear and I'm gonna use the nose as my guide and I'm going to slide past where I wanna go. I'm gonna slowly start to open and close my shear as I move down the section. See how we're starting to create a little bit of a razor effect by moving up and down with our shear. So as we continue down, I'm gonna slowly slide my fingers down. So you can see here that we've ended our reference point right here where the recession starts, right past the chin. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my section from in front of my ear. I'm gonna pull it straight out from her head. And I'm using this as my guide. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. Now I can see exactly where I need to go and what I need to remove. Opening my shear pulling past my guide and slowly removing that length all the way down. So by opening and closing my shear that way and creating that texture on the bottom, I'm gonna ensure that that wispiness when I blow dry her to give her that Farrah Fawcett look is gonna show even more. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the other side, but we're gonna do it giving it a little bit more of a Jennifer Aniston feel. So we're gonna be cutting traditionally in front of our fingers for this section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take diagonal forward sections all the way down her face frame, and I'm gonna be pulling it to the opposite side exactly where we created our guide before. We're just gonna be cutting it differently on this side. So I'm actually gonna pull this out of the way. So taking a diagonal forward section, similar to a triangle, I'm gonna be pulling it right over here to the bridge of her nose, and I'm just going to remove the length. Same thing, I'm just taking another diagonal forward section. This is going to, this is gonna complete the section right above the recession of the hairline. So as I pull it forward, I can see my guide right where I need to go. This is all gonna be up to you and how you wanna angle this. So if you want, you could pull your fingers a little bit more vertical to preserve more length. 
So all I'm doing is following that guide right up to where I cut previous. Now, same thing as the other side. I'm gonna take this last section. I'm gonna pull it straight out. Now, because we are working in toward the length, I am gonna pull this a little bit more vertical and even slightly diagonal the opposite way to preserve a little bit more length. See my guide, I know exactly where I need to go. Just preserve a little bit more length around the face and I'm going to cut straight up. Now, all I'm gonna do here is pull that out. I saw exactly where I left out a little bit of that connection and we're just gonna connect. So now I'm gonna blow dry both sides and then go in with a dry cutting technique to complement each side and then show you how I would finish it with a hot iron. Okay, so we have finished the blow dry and what I did was I isolated the entire two front quadrants. So you can watch me sort of blend that in with the face frame that we did. Now I like to leave it until it's dry just depending on the density of the hair. Sometimes when we're dealing with a finer texture, we could cut a little bit too deep. So I just prefer to wait till it's dry. So this is what we have isolated. And you can already see that the hair is already kind of doing exactly what we want it to because of the way that we cut it. So now we're gonna be working with my Sambia slide shears. And these are my favorite dry cutting shears because the blades are beveled it pushes the hair for a softer result. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add the rest of the quadrant in the front to the face frame that we cut originally. We're gonna pull it all forward, so isolating the top from the bottom, flipping this section out, so I'm able to see exactly the guide that I created earlier, but now I have the hair behind it. So I'm gonna take my slide shear and I'm gonna use a reverse point cut to blend out those pieces. So now that I can see my guide, I'm gonna come from behind and start to texturize the section behind my face frame to blend in with my face frame. So imagine just cutting tiny triangles out of your section to create that wispy face frame. Now all I'm doing is I'm working my way down the entire section and taking that texture out. See what I've created here? So now, so now when I take this section and start to flip it back, it naturally wants to already do it because we are creating that texture going back. So now I'm gonna take the bottom section, I'm gonna pull everything forward, I can see my guide, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I really love these slide shears because it really allows me to not put a lot of pressure on the hair when I'm adding texture. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna recheck those sections one last time to see if I'm happy with it and then we'll move on to the other side. I can still see a little bit of a heavy line in there so I'm just gonna come in with the tip of my slide cutters and remove that heavy weighted line. So now we're gonna be working on the other side, which is our Jennifer Aniston side. So we're gonna be coming in with a slide cutting motion on the surface of our section. So I have this entire quadrant pulled forward just like I did on the other side, except we're just gonna let it sit in natural fall and actually cut it against her face. So I can already see that we're a little heavy in the bang. So what I'm actually gonna do is I am going to just lift this up because we know when we elevate hair, we can soften it, okay? And I wanna soften this bang just a little bit. So I'm gonna let that original length fall and then just come in to take out a little bit of weight to blend it out to our section right here. Now that I've softened that section up, I'm gonna come in and do my slide cutting motion on the surface. And about an inch and a half to two inches into the length of the hair, I'm gonna start to create that texture. All I'm gonna do is come in and start to whittle away, working my way down to the length. Now I'm cutting towards her face 
because I want this to fall towards her face. The great thing about cutting a natural fall is it's gonna do exactly what you expect it to do. Now right here, I can see exactly where my section that fell into the face frame is not blending. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna blend it by removing little triangles of texture. By not cutting this section directly when the hair was wet, we saved a lot of density that way. Once you're happy with your texture, now I'm gonna go in and do some heat styling. So now I'm gonna be coming in with one of my favorite tools, the Samvia 3-in-1 Blow Dry Hot Brush. And I'm gonna be using it on the second setting, which has heat and air. So we kind of get a little bit of a blow dry effect from it. So what I'm gonna be doing with this first section is I'm actually going to start with my blow dryer on top of the section so we can emphasize that flip out. And then on the other side, we're gonna be doing it underneath the section to emphasize it flipping under. The great thing about this brush is it doesn't get so hot that you're not able to use your hand to control it when you're working with it. Same goes for your client. So now like that side where we flipped everything out, we're gonna do the opposite on this side, coming from underneath the section and flipping everything under. Now after your blow dry, you can go in with a hairspray or a texture spray or even any sort of texture putty to just sort of emphasize what you've already done to the texture. You can see we've got these nice layers sort of coming in towards her face with that sort of 90s vibe. And then we have a really fun 70s vibe on this side. I really hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial on face framing two different ways. Don't forget to follow Sam via on Instagram and YouTube. And please follow me, Sammy Skinner Hair, on Instagram and TikTok.